It was just another day for Emily as she strolled through the local estate sales looking for hidden treasures. She had always been fascinated by old things, especially when they held a bit of history. As she walked past various items, her eyes caught sight of something unusual among the cluttered room. A small box labeled Antique Dolls. Intrigued, Emily made her way over to the seller who was busy organizing more items on the table. He greeted her warmly and invited her to take a closer look at the contents of the box. Inside were several antique porcelain dolls arranged neatly side by side. Each one had an unsettling grin plastered across its face, making it difficult for Emily not to feel uneasy about their presence. Despite the creepy vibe they gave off, Emily couldn't resist their charm. There was something captivating about them that drew her in even further. Without hesitation, she purchased the entire set of eight porcelain dolls from the old man, paying him handsomely for what he claimed were genuine antiques dating back centuries ago. As soon as she got home, Emily carefully placed all the dolls on display in her living room, arranging them so they faced outwards towards visitors like a welcoming committee. At first glance, they appeared harmless enough. Delicate figurines painted with intricate details such as lace dresses, tiny boots, and elaborate hairstyles. However, upon closer inspection, Emily noticed that each doll wore an unnervingly wide smile, which seemed almost sinister under the light. Over time, Emily began to notice strange occurrences happening around her house. Objects would mysteriously move or disappear, only to reappear later in different places. Doors would slam shut on them. Cold spots would form in certain rooms where none existed before, and shadows would dance along walls late at night. These incidents initially frightened Emily, but eventually became commonplace within her household. One evening, while sitting alone in her living room reading a book, Emily heard footsteps approaching from behind. Assuming it was just her cat playing around, she didn't think much of it until she turned around to find herself staring straight into the lifeless eyes of one of her porcelain dolls standing right behind her chair. Its wide grin stretched ear to ear as if mocking her vulnerability. Terror gripped Emily's heart as she realized then that these seemingly innocent trinkets were far from harmless. From that moment forward, Emily lived in constant fear knowing that at any given moment, one of those smiling porcelains could step out from its pedestal and make her life a living nightmare. Every sound outside caused her heart to race wildly. Every shadow cast by moonlight sent chills down her spine. She knew deep down inside that she needed to get rid of them, but part of her felt compelled to keep them close drawn by their mysterious allure despite their malevolent intentions. Days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months without incident. Emily thought maybe she imagined everything after all. But then one fateful night changed everything. Emily woke up suddenly feeling someone watching her closely through the darkness. She tried to move but found herself paralyzed, unable to utter a single word or cry for help. Slowly turning her head, she saw one of the porcelain dolls hovering above her bed, its eerie grin still etched onto its face. A cold sweat broke out on her body as she realized that they weren't content simply observing from afar anymore. Now they wanted to play games with her mind and soul. Panic took hold as Emily struggled against whatever force controlled her limbs. Just when she thought she couldn't bear it any longer, the porcelain doll raised its hand menacingly towards her face. In an instant, Emily felt a searing pain shoot through her skull, followed by an intense pressure building up inside her brain. The world went black, and she lost consciousness. When Emily finally came to, she found herself lying on the floor next to her bed. Her head pounded with excruciating pain, but thankfully, she could move again. Gingerly getting up, she surveyed the room, only to discover something truly terrifying. Everyone she knew and loved was gone. Family members, friends, colleagues all vanished without a trace. Their absence left behind only empty spaces filled with silence and emptiness. A sense of dread consumed Emily as she realized that the porcelain dolls had taken them away, replacing them with exact replicas of themselves dressed in similar clothes and posed in familiar positions. They stood motionless throughout the house, their sinister smiles taunting her like vengeful demons from hell. Trapped within her own nightmare, Emily desperately searched for answers regarding why this was happening and how to stop it. Time passed agonizingly slow as days turned into weeks and weeks into months. 
Emily spent most of her time locked away in her room, afraid to venture out into the rest of the house, for fear of encountering one of the smiling porcelains, waiting to claim her soul next. Food rotted away untouched on kitchen counters, dust gathered thick on furniture and windowsills, plants wilted without water or sunlight. The once beautiful mansion now resembled nothing more than a haunted mausoleum, inhabited solely by the eerie dolls and their new hosts. Desperate for companionship, Emily reached out to the outside world through emails and letters, hoping someone might come to rescue her from this living nightmare. However, no one ever responded to her cries for help. Perhaps they too had fallen victim to these malicious entities masquerading as harmless dolls. Years passed, leaving Emily completely isolated from society except for occasional visits from delivery personnel dropping off food supplies, which she barely touched due to her growing paranoia and despair. Over time, she grew frail and weak, her mental state deteriorating rapidly under the weight of loneliness and torment inflicted upon her by the malevolent forces controlling everything around her. Eventually, Emily found herself lying on her deathbed, surrounded by an army of smiling porcelains, peering down at her with bone-chilling indifference. As she breathed her last breath, one final realization dawned upon her. The true nature of evil lies not in physical harm, but rather in psychological torture, breaking down a person's will until there's nothing left but despair and insanity. And in this case, the smiling porcelains proved to be masters of that art indeed. In a small village nestled deep within the heart of a dense forest, there lived a renowned doll maker named Elias. He was known far and wide for his exceptional craftsmanship, creating exquisite dolls so realistic they seemed to come alive. His talent was unparalleled. Each doll he created bore a striking resemblance to its owner, capturing their very essence. Elias had been making dolls since he was a child. He had learned the art from his father before him, who had learned it from his grandfather. It was a family tradition that spanned generations, dating back centuries. Each generation added their unique touches to the craft, ensuring that it remained vibrant and evolving. The villagers held Elias in high regard, considering him somewhat of a local celebrity. Parents would bring their children to his workshop, eager for him to create a lifelong keepsake that would remind them of their precious offspring long after they had grown up and moved away. But little did they know about the dark secret behind Elias's masterpieces. As Elias's dolls aged alongside their owners, they began to take on more distinctive features, almost as if they were growing older along with the people they represented. This strange phenomenon fascinated the villagers, but none could have guessed what truly lay at the heart of Elias's work. Over time, as his dolls grew older and more lifelike, they started to develop personalities of their own. Some became fiercely protective of their owners, while others exhibited signs of jealousy or even malice. The villagers noticed these changes, but attributed them to the power of Elias's magic, not understanding the true nature of the curse that bound these dolls to their creator. One day, a young girl named Emily approached Elias with her newborn baby daughter, asking him to create a special doll for her. Emily had lost her parents in a tragic accident when she was just a teenager, leaving her all alone in the world. She wanted the doll to serve as a constant reminder of her mother, someone she could talk to and confide in whenever she felt lonely or overwhelmed by grief. Elias took great care in crafting the doll, infusing it with a piece of his own soul to give it life beyond that of any ordinary creation. When he presented it to Emily, she wept tears of gratitude, hugging the doll tightly to her chest like a long-lost friend. Years went by, and Emily raised her daughter Lily under the watchful eye of her beloved doll. As time marched on, the doll aged alongside both mother and daughter, becoming increasingly lifelike with each passing year. Eventually, Lily reached adulthood, and the once innocent doll transformed into a startling replica of herself, right down to the smallest details, including the freckles scattered across her nose and the dimple on her left cheek when she smiled. But the transformation didn't stop there. One fateful night, as Lily slept soundly in her bed, the doll crept out from beneath the covers, crawling silently towards her body until it had merged seamlessly with her flesh. 
where once there had been two separate entities, now there was only one, a single being sharing the same consciousness. Lily awoke to find herself staring into the eyes of her own face, feeling as though she were trapped inside her own body. Panic set in as she realized that she no longer controlled her limbs or her voice. Her thoughts were jumbled, fragmented, like trying to listen to multiple conversations happening simultaneously. Desperate to break free from this terrifying existence, Lily struggled against the hold the doll had over her mind and body. But try as she might, she couldn't escape the horrific reality that had befallen her. Instead, she found herself standing outside her own home, watching helplessly as her mother tucked her daughter into bed each night, unaware of the twisted fate that awaited her. Meanwhile, Elias watched events unfold from afar, knowing full well the consequences of his actions. He had always warned his customers never to become too attached to their dolls, never to treat them as living beings. But they hadn't listened, blinded by their desire for something tangible to remember their loved ones by. And now they paid the ultimate price. As more and more villagers fell victim to the curse of Elias's dolls, the townspeople began to realize the truth behind the mysterious disappearances and unusual occurrences plaguing their community. A group of brave souls banded together, determined to put an end to the madness once and for all. They stormed Elias's workshop, ready to confront the man responsible for the suffering and chaos that had engulfed their lives. But when they arrived, they found no trace of the doll maker himself, only piles of abandoned dolls, their once lifelike faces now cracked and faded, bearing testament to the passage of time. In the years that followed, the village slowly recovered from the devastation wrought by Elias's legacy. Families picked up the pieces, rebuilding their shattered lives and moving forward without fear of the past haunting them. Yet some say that on quiet nights, when the wind whispers through the trees and the moon casts eerie shadows upon the ground, you can still catch a glimpse of Elias's shadowy figure lurking amongst the tombstones in the old cemetery, forever bound to the cursed dolls he created so many years ago. In the dimly lit corners of a forgotten town, Max, a young ventriloquist with a natural talent that bordered on the uncanny, wandered from one shadowy venue to the next. His life was a tapestry of dimly lit stages and the ephemeral applause of transient audiences. Then one fateful night after the echoes of clapping had faded into the night, Max received an anonymous, unmarked package. Within its confines lay a ventriloquist's dummy, its craftsmanship unparalleled, sinister in its beauty. The dummy's eyes, black as the void, seemed to bore into Max's very soul, following his every move with an unsettling intensity. An inexplicable chill ran down his spine as he gazed upon it, the air around him charged with a foreboding aura. Compelled by an irresistible force, Max introduced this enigmatic figure into his act. The moment his fingers clasped around the wooden form, a jarring shift occurred. It was as if an unseen force had hijacked his will, imprisoning him within his own body. The dummy's lips parted, not with the expected comedic banter, but with a voice that was guttural and sinister, dripping with venomous intent. Its words were not Max's. They were laced with malevolence, spewing forth dark, forgotten secrets from Max's past. Secrets that had been buried in the deepest recesses of his mind. The audience, initially amused, soon recoiled in abject horror. Faces drained of color, eyes widened in fear. Some patrons collapsing unconscious, overwhelmed by the palpable aura of evil that the dummy exuded. Max, trapped in this nightmarish reality, struggled futilely to regain control, to silence the demonic entity that had hijacked his performance. But his efforts were in vain. The dummy's tirade continued, each word a dagger twisting in the fabric of reality. As days bled into weeks, the line between Max and the dummy blurred ominously. Max found himself ensnared in a waking nightmare, the dummy's presence an ever-growing malignancy. Haunting visions tormented him. The dummy, animated by some unholy will, crawling with spider-like movements across the darkness of his room, its wooden fingers scraping against the floorboards, its voice a sinister whisper, spewing threats and vile promises into Max's tormented psyche. 
Desperation clawed at Max's mind as he sought help, but his pleas fell on deaf ears. To the outside world, he was a man unraveling, his sanity fraying from the relentless wear of life on the road. But Max knew the truth. He was in the grips of something far more sinister, an entity that had chosen him as its vessel, a puppet ensnared by a puppeteer from the darkest depths of the unknown. And then, on a fateful night, amidst the chaos of a raucous bar, the line between reality and nightmare blurred irreversibly for Max. The dummy, an extension of his fractured psyche, unleashed its malevolence on an unruly patron. The horrifying spectacle unfolded as the dummy's fangs sunk deep into the heckler's neck, a grotesque scene bathed in blood. The ensuing pandemonium was a distant blur to Max, who was transfixed by the dummy's soulless black eyes, a mirror to a madness he could no longer control. In a moment of lucidity amidst the madness, Max's survival instinct surged. Grasping the dummy with a desperate strength, he roared, I am your master! It was a battle not just for control, but for his very soul. With a Herculean effort, Max shattered the puppet's malevolent hold. He dismantled the cursed object piece by piece, an act both cathartic and harrowing. Each chop was a strike against the darkness that had consumed him. Each piece scattered a step towards a piece he might never fully reclaim. Max was left a changed man, haunted not by the dummy, but by the darkness within himself that it had awakened. He knew the curse had etched itself into the very fabric of his being. His reflection became a constant reminder of the abyss he had gazed into. The menacing black eyes of the dummy, though gone, lingered in his own gaze, a haunting echo of the monster he had battled, both within and without. As Max journeyed through the remnants of his life, the echoes of that night resonated in the depths of his soul. He wandered, a man touched by a darkness that was both his burden and his lesson. The specter of the dummy's eyes was a constant companion, a shadow cast by the light of his regained humanity. In every mirror, in every reflection, Max saw not just himself, but a reminder of the thin line between man and monster, and the eternal vigilance needed to walk it.